So the hook is where we start the unit of work. Let's say it's on a Monday morning. I remember see, being in an old park many years ago, big city school, and uh, we were all in assembly, and suddenly an alien came zooming through the crowds being chased by a spaceman. And that was the hook for the key stage two story. That was the beginning. What on earth's going on? Who is the alien? Why on earth is a spaceman chasing the alien? So let's say on a Monday morning, we've launched it off with some sort of creative start. And then we're into learning our model text orally. And this is a really important part of the work that we do, particularly for those children, as uh, I've said elsewhere, those children who don't read very much, maybe they don't get read to very much at home, maybe there's not much interactive talk. Very early on, down in nursery and in reception, we can get going with learning simple stories like The Gingerbread Man. They have a lovely rhythm to them. Um, if you can teach a song, if you can teach Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, then you can teach them The Gingerbread Man. We use dual coding, actually it's triple coding really. So what I mean by that is we're going to learn this orally, but in order to really help us memorize it, we're going to draw it with a story map and we're also going to put some actions to it. So the first phase will involve a lot of oral retelling. I wouldn't do it just in uh, an English lesson. It's going to be much faster if we do it first thing in the morning, just before break, just after break, just before lunch, just after lunch. And at the end of the first day, make sure the map, a nice map goes home so that um, the children can do it at home. If you've got a portal, a school portal, it, the map can go up there and you can retell it so they can listen to it at home. Keep working on it so that by about the Wednesday or the Thursday, they know it really, really well, because we want to get into the uh, reading of it. In this first phase, then, there is a focus on the oral retelling, but we've also got daily grammar work, daily spelling work going on, and drama work. So we might be hot-seating characters, we might be recreating scenes, we might be interviewing the troll, interviewing the goats, so that we're really immersing ourselves uh, in this story. Younger ones will be setting up play opportunities, older ones it will come through, uh, come through drama. So we launch ourselves in, we use a story map, keep it very simple and very clear. If you go onto uh, YouTube or look on uh, Pinter, uh, Pinterest, uh, you'll see lots and lots of images of complicated story maps. Keep them absolutely crystal clear. Don't clutter them. We don't need an icon for every single word. They're just a visual prompt. We can also use actions, and the actions need to be consistent across the school. So if it's once upon a time in nursery, then it's once upon a time in reception, it's once upon a time in year one. So we tend to use the actions for the um, phrases and the language that we want to emphasize and want the children to learn. So we don't say, once upon a time there was a little red hen who lived on a farm. We say, once upon a time there was a little red hen who lived on a farm. So we use the actions to emphasize the language patterns. We use our expression to emphasize the language patterns and to emphasize meaning, because expression gives meaning and it gives punctuation. And we use the map as a visual memory. So we've got actions, we've got the map, we've got constant repetition. Almost every child, in fact, I can't think of many I've met, if any, almost every child can learn in this way. We're starting from what comes very naturally to human beings, which is the learning of language. Very small children are learning words, if they're in, a, uh, in the right circumstances, they're learning lots of words every single day. So we're tapping into the natural bit. And of course, if we know it really well, the joy of it is when we get to reading, everybody can read it. So with vigor, with expression, um, uh, we're going to learn our story orally, or our non-fiction text, or our rhyme, or our poem, we're going to learn it orally, so they've internalized it. One other thing I'll say about this, make sure the model texts are not too long. It is true that I, I'm, I once had somebody who said to me, it's taking a long time, we're on the fourth chapter. And our model texts are generally somewhere around 300, maybe 400 words. If you go over a side of A4, it's probably too long. And as they get older, in some ways, they need to get trimmer and trimmer and trimmer because if they're too full, you've got no room for manoeuvre in, term, in terms of adding and embellishing and manipulating. The best tip I can give you is make sure that you know the model text really well. It's hard to teach if you don't know it well. So practice, 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 and then get the kids working with you. 
I would always draw the map in front of the children if they're inexperienced because you want to show them how to map. Once they become experienced, you can sketch it in front of them and add, here's one that I did earlier. But remember, it's not artwork, stick men will do. Let's imagine that we've begun our unit of work and we've had our hook, we've launched the unit off, everybody's interested and engaged, and we're in the process of learning our text. We might be playing at that if we're uh, working with very small children or using our drama work in order to slow it down and deepen understanding um, of the model text that we're using, whether it be story or whether it be uh, non-fiction or indeed um, a poem. We'd also every day be working on spelling and grammar work, the sort of sentences we're going to need in order to write this um, text type. If you take non-fiction, for instance, um, we're going to get sentences, say it's a piece of discussion work, um, we're going to get sentences that perhaps say, um, we are discussing whether or not a new Tesco should be built down the road. And that whether or not um, phrase can give problems to some children because it's not the sort of language that we hear at home. Many children won't have heard that and they certainly won't have come across that uh, necessarily in their reading. So in order to internalise that and be comfortable with it, we have to hear it and say it, and we can play with it orally. We're discussing whether or not dragons exist in the Tewksbury area. We're discussing whether or not um, donkeys can fly. We're discussing whether or not spiders should be banned from the plug hole. We're discussing whether or not, so orally we can practise that. And then we can have a go on our mini whiteboards. We can also teach the transferable spellings we need. So that word weather is W-H-E-T-H-E-R, and we're going to get that one right because we're going to need that one. So what we do is we look at our model text and we think carefully about where are the transferable gram grammatical patterns that we want the children to be handling and manipulating in their writing to create an effect upon the reader? Where are the transferable spellings that we want them uh, to be using? And we make sure that those are taught every single day. The other element that might happen during the imitation phase, uh, uh, almost certainly will, sometimes it happens before, sometimes during, is the short burst writing. Short burst writing is where we take a key aspect of the narrative so let's imagine that we've got a unit, uh, a story unit, and the main focus is on settings. So over two or three days, we might do some short burst writing. So we might have up on the screen an image of an abandoned house. We'd brainstorm lots of words and phrases and ideas. And then the teacher would do some shared writing to model how to write a, a, a description. Just that little paragraph, perhaps. Um, that might go into uh, the story and the kids have a go at doing it themselves. So over two or three days we just sharpen our writing, we just get really good at writing setting descriptions because we're going to need to do that, it's the main focus for this unit of work. My wife for instance I can remember very often if she was doing suspense writing in year six she'd get them writing suspense paragraphs over two or three days so that when they came to do the whole thing, they could refer back and sometimes they would literally almost lift up uh, an earlier piece of writing and then manipulate it and use those techniques um, in their own writing. So running through this first phase, we've got the spellings, we've got the grammar, the sentence work that we need in order to create effects and practicing our main focus um, that we're going to uh, be using when we come to uh, work on our story or our non-fiction text. So those things are going to be happening daily. 